This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Whitmer here, along with the one, the only, Brandon Swanee Swanson. Hey, hey, hey. And Brandon, what, first off, first off, before I get into our banter, welcome into the Primetime Podcast. Here we talk about college football, basketball, mainly we're in football mode right now. You're on YouTube, thanks for watching us. If you're on Blog Talk Radio, thank you guys for giving us the listen today. But Brandon, what a week. What a week in college football. Clemson goes down. Washington State goes down. Washington goes down. We almost had a ton of other teams go down we as saw, well. We saw Auburn, Auburn go, go down. down. What a week in what I am dubbing the upset special week. Week 7, <laughs> the most upset special, or the most special week because it was filled with upset specials. Well, Ricky, there were just so many upsets that I, you and I, certainly when we talked about it, had no idea of, mm-hmm. of seeing that that would happen. Yeah. I had no no plans to be mm-hmm. saying that Syracuse was going to be beat Clemson. Clemson. I mean, no chance at all. And I'll be completely I, I honest. Couldn't believe, I couldn't believe that. Game. I will be completely honest. The first thing I thought of while doing the live stream that <laughs> we did, uh, Mark and I for fantasy football this week, the first thing I thought of when I saw the final score was, how many people in the comment section tried to tell me that Clemson should be number <laughs> one over Alabama? That's really what I did. I just started laughing because I'm like, you guys thought you should be number one over Alabama and you lose to Syracuse. That's just what I think. But I want to segue that into our first topic. We got a jam-packed show like always. Going to be talking Butch Jones. Going to be talking Pac-12, uh, Pac-12 North. But I want to segue this upset and this Clemson stuff into our first topic. And the team we're taking a look at first is the Penn State Nittany Lions. And they came out unscathed. The only reason they came out unscathed, they did not play this week. They had a bye week. And because they had that bye week, they now move up into number two in the AP Top 25 rankings. And Brandon, I'm just going to ask you this. Penn State. Their next three games, they get Michigan this week. They have Ohio State after that. They've got Michigan State after that. Bingo, bingo, bongo, one, two, three. Can the Nittany Lions, can this team survive the Big Ten East coming up in their next three games? Well, it's certainly going to be a test for them. And it's going to definitely be a test in the next couple of weeks because they're on the road for Ohio State and they're on the road Mm -hmm. for Michigan State. And that Michigan State game has all of a sudden become a game where you're like, okay, we've got a definite threat in in a very quality opponent. The game coming up against Michigan is the game that I think I would be least concerned with. Concerned, but the least concerned out of the three of them. We saw what Michigan did this past week. We saw what Michigan did two weeks ago against Michigan State. We saw what Michigan did this past week against Indiana. Yes, they got the win, but they didn't do it in any pretty way. Didn't I sort of predict that? Like, I didn't say exactly that it would be close all the way through, but by me saying that, oh, it'll be close early, and then Michigan will pull away and get the win, you kind of, I at least knew that there was a chance Indiana was going to play this one close, and I thought they would especially early. They did. They did. Michigan doesn't have enough offense now, especially Mm -hmm. now that Wilton Spade is no longer there, and uh, O'Korn is the man, or was the man, who was was, uh, under, under center. Only 58 yards. He was not great. Mm -hmm. He is not great, and I think that that's... Part of the problem with Michigan is that they don't really have that guy who they can go to and and lean on to get the job done. And John O'Corn has had a lot of turnovers. He has mm-hmm. just one touchdown pass to four interceptions, and he hasn't really. And I understand that a big part of that was in the game against Michigan State when it was a slop fest in the fourth quarter. I completely get that, but there were. There were some things that he did well in that game. Going back to now talking about O'Corn and talking about that Michigan State game. There were some things that he did well, but there were so many reads that he missed. He missed the guy. He missed the guy high or he missed, you know, out in front of him or behind him. He is not pinpoint on his accuracy. Mm-hmm. 
So now getting back to the game that's coming up this weekend, Michigan, Penn State. I think Penn State's defense will be able to capitalize on some of those inaccuracies that O'Corn has shown so far this season. And also, I don't know. I know that Michigan's defense has been good, but I don't know if they're going to have us have an answer for Saquon Barkley. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because Northwestern and their defense thought that they had an answer for Saquon Barkley, and they did in the first half. But then they, they made didn't adjust- in the second half. I was going to say made adjustments and things changed. And Saquon Barkley ended up with 75 yards and two touchdowns on the ground, which mm-hmm. may not sound like a lot, but when he had literally less than nothing in the first half, he comes back in the second half, came on for a very strong second half, and it was a big reason why Penn State was able to get that win. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be a very big game. The next three games, it's going to be a big game every game. But you look at This first game coming up against Michigan, I think that Penn State will be able to get that win. I don't think that Michigan has enough offensive firepower. And I just, quite honestly, don't think that they're going to be able to contain Saquon Barkley. And then, of course, Trace McSorley is so good. But then the next two games are the two games that I think are going to be the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. Because Ohio State... Since that loss, since that loss that they had to Oklahoma, they've played pretty good football. And then Michigan State, of course, too, playing with a real big chip on their shoulder and playing with a lot of confidence. Those are two very dangerous football teams. But Penn State is no slouch. And they didn't make it to number two in the rankings by accident. They've been very good this year. They've been very competitive this year. And that's why I think Penn State is going to, and I'm not going to say roll through these guys, because this is the meat. This is where we find out if Penn State is truly a number two team, a truly a top five team, because they're now playing teams that are ranked. I know that they've been good, and, and, and people will say, but hey. They haven't played any ranked opponents This yet. is where you and show me what you're made and of. And that is true. This is where we find out how mm-hmm. good you actually are. And I think they are going to show us because so far they have had tests. Iowa was a test. The first half against Northwestern was a test. Mm-hmm. And they have passed the first two tests, and now you're getting to the real hard ones. You know, those were just the regular uh, chapter tests. We're starting to get to, uh, you know, the midterms here where you got to go over everything and see how you are here in the middle of the Mm -hmm. season. This is where we find out if they are truly an A-plus football team. We're certainly going to find out the next three weeks. Well, and the thing that I look at is, first off, I want to start with Michigan because they are the next opponent that Penn State will play this weekend. I'm not I'm with you. You don't go in thinking that we won the game. We don't have to look at it. You'll get beat. However, I'm like out of the worry ranking, I'm worrying the least about this Michigan game. Oh, corn doesn't scare me. I mean, yeah, they have a run game behind like they had 200 yards rushing from their top rusher in the Indiana game Michigan did. But it doesn't really scare me because, yeah, Saquon Bart. Like, the big thing that I think this game will come down to is the defenses. And if Penn State's defense, I know they don't have a lot of them, but if they can get get after O'Korn, they do have 17 sacks, but interceptions. If they can get some interceptions, cause some turnovers, force that Michigan defense to be on the field, this is how they'll win. Force Michigan to be on the field more than they want to defensively and just wear them down with that run game. Wear them down with Saquon Barkley, and eventually when you get to the end of the game, that defense will be gassed, and Barkley will be able to run all over them. That's how I think that this game plays out on ABC. The game I am most worried about is the Ohio State game, and the main reason I am so worried about it is a guy that I want to say was two or three weeks ago, Brandon, That everyone's like, oh, he doesn't have the confidence. And actually, I think it was three weeks ago. It was before the the conference schedule had started. Everyone's like, JT Barrett is he doesn't have it. Doesn't have the confidence. 
We even talked about it, and I said it looked like he didn't have confidence, and that was coming off of a five-touchdown game against UNLV. Since that UNLV game, 5-0 and against UNLV, 3-0 and against Rutgers, touchdown to interceptions is what I'm talking about, 3-0 and with Maryland and a rushing touchdown, and this past weekend at Nebraska in Lincoln, five passing touchdowns, two on the ground for a total of seven touchdowns, This is a offense, this is a team that is starting to catch fire at the right time. And it's not just Barkley. At the beginning of the season, I even said... Barrett. Barrett. If It's not just Barrett. I said Barkley. I'm thinking Sparkle Barkles in my head. It's not just JT Barrett. If this offense gets on a little bit of what I like to call a rolly roll and starts catching steam, this offense with its speed can kill almost any team except Alabama in this country. But but one of the things I want to bring up to you, too, is that we talked about with, with Penn State the fact that they haven't really played anybody in terms mm-hmm. of ranking it, That's to, it. To, to, to this point. But really, neither has, neither has Ohio, Ohio State. Minus the Oklahoma game week mm-hmm. two where they did struggle. And they lost. And, and Oklahoma's defense, Oklahoma's defense, mm-hmm. of all things, played really well and only allowed 16 points. Since then... They have not played anyone that's been too enticingly scary. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you play Rutgers. That's that's not difficult. That's not difficult. You play Maryland. Maryland played really, really well against Texas early on in the season. But again, Maryland is not at the level that Ohio State is. Mm-hmm. And then Nebraska, we've talked about Nebraska, how much of a disappointment they have been. These teams are not on the same level as Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Penn State is on the same level as Ohio State. They can hang with them. They have a defense. They have offensive playmakers that can, just as much as Ohio State can, Penn State can do the same thing. So that's why that game would scare me the most as someone who is rooting for Penn State. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if I'm an Ohio State person... That game would scare me the most as an Ohio State fan, the Penn State game, because you both have playmakers who mm -hmm. can make some really great plays, and then you also, at the same time, have defenses who could hold down some of those playmakers and see, okay, now that some of these guys aren't scoring what they usually do or not being able to make the plays they usually do, who's going to come up big for me here? These are two teams that are on the same level talent wise and i'm going to be very very interested to see who's able to get that win it is going to be close it's going to be a good game Mm -hmm. it's going to be hard fought we're going to see points put up in that game i predict that's not going to be one of the lower scoring games that is going to be a high scoring game and i i don't think i could tell you right now who's going to come out victorious but it's going to be a great game we're going to see the best some of the best offenses put on display. And here's the thing, though, is that we're really going to find out from both teams mm-hmm. who is who, who who's for who's for real, who's for pretend. Because if Ohio State comes out and again only scores 16 points, we know they're they're going to obviously mask their inabilities to to get things done against mm-hmm. the poorer teams in in the league. But if you cannot hang with teams of similar talent to you we we know what's going on you know JT Barrett 21 touchdowns on the season only one interception that's very impressive Mm -hmm. but does that speak to how good that team really is you know what I'm saying because are you going to come out and are you going to play like you did play against Oklahoma a good team a quality opponent or are you going to come out and you play and put up numbers like you did against a Rutgers? If you do that against a Penn State, well, we know you're for real. But if you come out and all you're able to do is muster 16, 20 points, well, then either you're not for real or Penn State is just that much better. Here's what it's going to be for Penn State. And I know we're talking a lot about McSworley. We're talking a lot about Saquon Barkley. What do they have on defense? The next three games, Michigan, Ohio State, Michigan State. The most important part of their team in these next three games for me 
has nothing to do with the offense. It's not the quarterback. It's not the running back. It's the defense. And the reason why I say that, against Michigan, I am saying, and this will give away my pick, I don't care, I don't think this defense for Penn State is going to have too many problems against Michigan. You look at this pass defense from Penn State, they are a top 10 defense against the pass. They've only given up just over 1,000 yards on the season, and they are giving up an average of 167.8 a game. That is the ninth best defense in the league. Now, Michigan is third. They're only at 138. However, when you're going up against McSworley, I expect him to get more than 138 yards. Also, another thing, like I said, if that defense is on the field more and more and more, and you're kind of wearing them down with that run game, that'll open things up for McSworley because the defense will be so tired from being on the field. That's the game plan I would go at into it. I just don't think O'Corn is going to be able to crack this Penn State defense. That's why, to me, the big test, and Lewerke with the Michigan State Spartans, I think the same thing. I think that the Penn State defense will win that battle. That's who I'm giving the slider to. It comes down to that Ohio State-Penn State game. And I'm not saying, like, when I was talking up JT Barrett, I'm talking up this offense, I'm not expecting Ohio State to go in there and just run rough shot, win 72 to nothing, walk out with the victory. I expect it to be a really good game. I expect it to be a high-scoring game. I expect it to be one of the better games when we get to that week of college football. But the big thing that I look at is this Penn State defense. If this defense comes into each one of these next three games with that kind of, we're coming in to do our job and then we're leaving, that thing we see from Alabama where it's like, you know what, come in, do your job, win the game, leave. Come in, do your job, win the game, leave. If we get that from this defense, boom, 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 they'll win all three. They'll win the Big Ten East, and then it'll be, okay, we got to beat Wisconsin, which isn't as much of a, it's not as big of a threat as Ohio State or what they have to go through in these next three games. I would put Wisconsin above Michigan right now. Don't know where I'd put Michigan State or Wisconsin. Maybe they're like right here even, but Wisconsin's not a caliber team like Ohio State is. Ohio State's the toughest opponent that Penn State's going to play in their conference, either side of the conference. If this defense comes to play, they will win every game that that defense shows their A game because the offense has the weapons to win. If the defense gives Saquon Barkley and McSworley more opportunities, Penn State will win all three of these games. So, see, you're, you're looking at the defense, and you're saying you're, you you want to see this defense mm-hmm. uh, come out and play. I, I look at the offense. I look at the offense here because, yeah, you have a lot of weapons, but you cannot come out and you cannot start slow. Yes, you know, we, we, we've seen how teams have come out and they've started slow mm-hmm. and, you know, they haven't been able to get things going. Then they're having to force the football in, in there, make throws that they don't want to make, you know, abandon the run game. They need to, Penn State has to be able to hold true to what it likes to do. It likes to go with McSorley, but it also likes to be able to have a solid dose of Saquon Barkley. Mm-hmm. And he's, I mean, they're going to go to him, whether it's, via the running game, the passing game, the return, whatever it is. But I think it's very important for this offense to be able to get things going quickly and move things against these defenses because they're going up against some good defenses. They're mm-hmm. going up against a good Michigan defense who's on, who's giving up less than 15 points a game to teams on average. You're going up against a tough Ohio State defense, and you're going up against a tough Michigan State defense. So I really want to be able to see this offense put some points on the board and move the football down the field, take some shots against these defenses, and show some confidence that you are willing to move the ball down the field to take those shots, to throw at their corners, and do that throughout the game. If you are able to stick to that type of game plan and then have it work successfully, that's what's going to be able to have you win this game. As much as defense is important, offense is 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 equally as important because you know, if you if your defense is doing its job, you want to see your offense putting up some points mm-hmm. to be able to give yourself a nice lead. And, the one- and I think Penn State is I, I think Penn State can do that. And one thing 
that if you're a Penn State fan, you should be comforted by this. You you went up against a pretty good, pretty solid Northwestern defense. Yeah, things did not go well in the first half. But you showed that you can make adjustments at halftime. Mm-hmm. And that you can make those adjustments and do some really good things coming out in the second half. So that's also really important. It speaks to your coaching, but it also speaks to your players as well to be able to make those adjustments, see some different things on the field, see some different things in the defensive uh, motions and shifts and everything like that. And I think that if Penn State's able to do that throughout the next three games, mm-hmm. they're going to be very successful. Here's the one last thing I'm going to bring up with Penn State, and this is the last two points. Like the whole time, I've been putting the good the good mojo on Penn State. The what I think they'll do to win. How will they win these next three games? Here are the two little bits of history. You know me, Brandon. I, I like my history. I think history repeats itself more times than not. And two things I look at, first off, James Franklin has yet to beat Jim Harbaugh in this Michigan-Penn State rivalry. For the last two years, James Franklin's been at Penn State since 14, Jim Harbaugh since 15. Last two years, Michigan has beaten Penn State. And I'm not saying like, oh, they lost twice before, they're going to lose this one. It's not the same Michigan team. I know it's It's different. It's not the same Michigan team. I know it's different, but I look at it and I go, just from that point, something about a Jim Harbaugh team has been able to get the edge on a James Franklin team. I know this team is different. Another thing, and this is the one that would scare me even more if I was a Penn State fan, since 2014, when James Franklin's been here, you've lost twice to Ohio State, and your only win was a three-point win last season. However, that was at home. The last time this Penn State team won in Columbus was 2011, 20-14. That's the game that scares me the most out of the next three, Ohio State, Penn State. That's the Big East championship right there. But, of course, everyone from the beginning of the season – predicted that that would be the Big East champion or the Big Ten East championship. You like your history. I mm-hmm. like my right now. Yeah. And that's how I have to look at this. This is how you, and th- that's just quite honestly how you have to look at it. You have to throw everything else out the window mm-hmm. as you always do and look at this is not the same Michigan Wolverine team that they're going to be playing. They, I mean, mm-hmm. they don't even have a solid quarterback in their starting. The Penn State defense should be able to, to really get all over John O'Corn. Mm-hmm. They they really should. And there should be no excuse if they can't do that. And then, yeah, they may have beat Penn, uh, Ohio State last year. And it may have been at home, but it doesn't matter. You beat them. You beat them. You just have to be able to go in there to Ohio State, have the mindset, all right, we're here. This is a big game. we got to be up. We've got to go out. we got to play our best best football, and we cannot turn the football over. Mm-hmm. If you can hold on to the football, control the time of possession, not turn the football over, you can go in there, and you can go in and just beat about anybody. Here's the last thing I want to ask you, and this has to do with the Buckeye schedule moving forward, Penn State schedule moving forward. Which one would you rather have? I am putting you in the seat of a head coach of a college football team. Could be anything. Name a mascot. That's your mascot. You're playing your toughest ranked opponents. Would you rather have them 1-2-3, like Penn State has them the next few few weeks, or would you rather have what Ohio State has? Give me one here, then in Iowa, give me another one, then in Illinois, then give me the last one. Well, I was going to say that I would like it how Penn State is, because it would go one, two, three. You, you, there is no loss of of energy or mm-hmm. momentum or anything like that. Because boom, boom, boom. But at the same time, you do that. You get those out of the way, and then you go boom, boom, boom. And you're playing Illinois. You're playing Rutgers. You're playing you know teams like that. Mm-hmm. Rutgers, Nebraska, and Maryland. Who's who they got after that? So you're playing teams at a much lower caliber. Mm-hmm. That does you no good when you're going into the Big Ten championship game. Who, because right, you right just, now it's probably going to be Wisconsin. Because you, you just played, you just played three teams that it was like, eh, you know, we, you know, we played them, mm-hmm. we beat them. There wasn't a ton of energy because we just weren't getting up on that same level. Mm-hmm. Now, can you find that level again to get up and and go in and try and win the Big Ten championship? I, I, 
I I don't know. I I like having them back to back to back, but I would like to maybe have two back to back and then a final one right before mm-hmm. you end the regular season. Part of me wants to lean towards the way Ohio State has it. Give me one, then they have the basically the off week in between. The only thing that scares me about that as a fan is that Iowa game on the road at Iowa. Illinois doesn't scare me. I'm sorry. I'm an Illinois fan. I even have to say that it doesn't scare me. But when you have those opponents in between, does that give that opportunity for that to be a trap game and for you to let your guard down because it's like, pfft. We're not playing Michigan today. We're not playing Michigan State. We're not playing Penn State. We could kind of take this one off. We, we we got this in the bag. That's what I would worry about when you have them kind of spread out like that instead of bingo, bango, bongo, right three in a row. Yeah. No, I I, I, I would agree. I, I kind of see it on both mm-hmm. sides. I like the three in a row, but I also do think, okay, if you do that, you get those three out of the way, whatever you do. I mean, let's mm-hmm. say that you do well against them. And you're in the spot that you want to be, and now you have just three kind of clunker games. Mm-hmm. You know, can you get right back to that same energy level to go and play in this Big Ten championship game that has a ton of stuff riding on the line? Can you do that? But this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you think down below in the comment section. This was a long one. This is I'm calling this the jumbo set to start the game. We're going in the jumbo set. We're getting the podcast started off right. You guys let us know what you guys think. Can Penn State survive? This schedule, can they do it? Let us know what you guys think down below in the comment section.